Hello, this is unit 9 of the Raspberry, and this is the final unit, uh, final video in the series. So what we're going to do um, in this unit is we are going to install a LAMP stack um, on the Raspberry. So LAMP stands for uh, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Uh, so Linux is already installed on our uh, Raspberry, that's Raspbian. Uh, the distribution Raspbian contain, contains a Linux kernel. So uh, here's the setup. I'm going to try to explain what's going on here. So right now, hopefully, you should be able to SSH to your Raspberry Pi using SSH, and you provide a domain name of this form, and then the DINDNS server is, is uh, pulled and then returns the IP address on your local area network of your Raspberry Pi of the form, for example, 192.168.117 happens to be my the address of my Pi on my network. And so this way your, term, your uh, laptop can connect to your Raspberry Pi through SSH. So what it means is that the SSH server on Raspbian is enabled. And therefore when the Raspbian boots, then the server is started, it becomes a daemon, and this daemon is there to serve requests coming from the outside for SSH in. So um, that's great, and that allows you to issue commands to uh, your Raspberry Pi, and if you remember you need 8, you can um, start applications, even graphical user applications. Well, what if you wanted to um, access, because you have a, a Linux box, you could make it a Linux server serving web pages. So why not um, open a browser, put in the address of your Raspberry Pi, um, and maybe the name of a, a web page, and have it serve you this page. Well, unfortunately, uh, th there's no web server installed or enabled, so if you were to do that, nothing would happen. You would get um, server not found very likely uh, as a response there. So what we need to do instead, we need to install a web server. So the one, the most uh, popular one is Apache. And so what we're going to do uh, in the lab is to install uh, the Apache server. And as soon as this is installed, and as soon as we start it as a daemon, then it will serve HTML pages. So in this case, we'll be able to say, I want to bring up, and we'll see where the default directory is for putting web pages, but we'll be able to load very simple pages, but pages written only in HTML. Um, if you want a little bit more sophistication, we would like to be able to put some PHP code, the PHP language, PHP code inside our web pages so that we could do things that are a little more sophisticated. So the next step will be to install the PHP language and the libraries and attach them to Apache. We're going to tell Apache we have the libraries for you to use if you want. If you find some PHP code in a, in a page, here is how to execute the PHP um, uh, interpreter. And uh, we're not going to stop there. Uh, we're going to do something a little more interesting. We're going to install a database. So we're going to install MySQL, which is a database server, and run its daemon so that it serves requests, and we're going to attach it to... We're going to make Apache aware of the server. And therefore, now we should be able to install apps that um, kind of live on the web server and serve pages out of a database. Uh, and a very good example of that is WordPress. WordPress is a blogging platform, so we're going to install WordPress on top, and that's that's why you you see the idea of having a stack. Is that first you put uh, the web server Apache, and then on top of that you add PHP, and then you add My, uh, MySQL, and then you can install more things on top that d depend on the stack of layers available. And so we'll install WordPress, which is a blogging platform. And then we'll create a very simple blog. Just doesn't have to be sophisticated. Um, just a blog that we can see appear here. And if we can see our post appearing here, it means that this whole integration here is working. So that is what we'll be doing. So um, so that will be. So I'll have a demo of that at the end of this video. Um, I'll push it at the end. It's a long setup, and I'll do the same thing as in a previous unit, unit eight. I'll just go through the lab that I've prepared and, and all the steps 
and um, give a, a annotated um, version of it uh, with my own comments on, on each step. Um, so uh, Apache, if you are w wondering why this name, well, Brian Bellenho Bellendorf, one of the uh, creators of Apache, had coined the, the server Apache, but when he told that to his friends, they all understood a patchy, like, uh, where is it? Yeah, a patchy, oops, server, web server, because when you write a fairly big, uh, large piece of software, you're always patching it, or adding patches from different sources to, um, to fix bugs and to add features. Um, so people understood a patchy web server when he was talking about Apache. Um, little interesting story. Um, so um, I'll refer you to the video at the end. I'm going to continue uh, and there's very little, very few uh, more slides to go through, so I'll continue uh, with that. A um, uh, uh, few words about WordPress. It's a Blogit platform that is probably the most popular Blogit platform out there. And it's used not only for blogging, but uh, real estate agents will use that. Photographers will use WordPress to host um, uh, photography and, and a collection of their photographs. Uh, create portfolios, artists will have portfolios, so it's really a, a powerful platform with a lot of add-ons add um, and a lot of uh, features and, and other um, software packages that will allow you to create WordPress sites very quickly, very easily, without too much coding, almost no coding. Um, uh, so the lab assignment for today will be to install WordPress on the RPI and create a blog post. That's it. It's just follow the steps and the lab report will basically be uh, the history of all the commands you'll have entered at the keyboard at the um, Linux prompt. All right, so this is a different section for, from this unit. I'm going to look at blogs. If you are a Linux administrator, you want to know about logs and logs will be um, sometimes the only way for you to figure out what is going on with your system. Maybe it's not working quite correctly or maybe something is, is amiss. The log, Linux catalogs everything that is going on. Uh, not just users, but also all the different daemons. And uh, when you have, for example, an Apache web server, every request to uh, Apache for a web page will be logged. So you'll have a log of how many people have the ta uh, access to a particular page, where they were located in the world, what particular time of the day, uh, and so on. So it's great for getting statistics as well, and also see what's, uh, what's going on. It's also um, very good um, if you want to figure out um, whether somebody has broken into your system and is logging um, and, and creating uh, havoc. And of course, the log will be a place that such a person would want to go to and, and erase their trace, uh, their steps, so that they can um, go incognito on your system. Um, so the logs are located in uh, var log, and that's standard for most uh, Linux systems. And the log files are a set of records that maintain uh, all these different steps. Uh, nice description here. We're going to take a look at uh, the logs right now. And um, syslog, auslog, bootlog, and kern, and dmessage. Um, so cd var log. Uh, some of so let's take a look at the logs and most recent. You see that root the root user is uh, the owner of all these logs, and some of them, um, as pi, you won't be able to read. See this because here, if I look at this particular file debug, it is owned by root and um, every person of the group ADM, and actually Pi is, is part of this group. Um, but here, uh, let's see, I know that some of them, like this one, VNC server x11, so it's a log kept by the VNC server. Its file is owned by root and anybody in the root um, group, and it's re uh, readable and writable by only root, the, the user, and nobody else. Nobody in the group, uh, nobody uh, on the system. So Pi would not by itself be able to access this, so you would have to use sudo in front of a command. Um, all right. So uh, syslog, let's take a look at syslog. Cat syslog. 
All right, I'm going to make my window a little tad bigger so I can see all lines. Um, so you're going to see uh, a lot of information of, with that particular format, a date, a time, and some information about what's going on, 270A, kernel. Uh, and this is something that I've noticed with these uh, particular Pi, uh, voltage normalized. So every so often when you use VNC, you may see that on, on yours, I'm seeing that quite a bit on mine, there's a little um, uh, zigzag, yellow zigzag, like a, fl a bolt of lightning um, icon that appears from time to time. And what that means is that the voltage that the Pi is getting from the charger is not enough. Um, so it's complaining, basically. But, so what it's doing is that every time it's putting the little icon on the screen, it's also recording uh, this in it. And um, so on the voltage, see it says, it's saying, I'm not getting enough of a voltage, and then it's normalizing it after a, a short while. Um, so it takes like about 10 seconds for this to happen. Uh, so that's mostly what we're going to find there and, and some uh, other information. Uh, auth log. So this log is very interesting. Uh, so let's take a look at, uh, I'm going to cat it, auth log. All right, I'm going to make the window a little bigger. Actually, I'll make the font a little smaller. All right, so here we see um, sudo, a lot of sudo commands. I've been issuing a lot of sudo commands, so they're all recorded. Um, and um, I'm, see, here is a command. I'm removing PHP. I've been installing the, uh, the stack that I'm, I've, I've introduced here. I've been installing it, and then I've been removing it so I can reinstall it and follow the lab. Um, so we see all these things that are, you know, um, commands that normally a super user should be doing. Uh, and also if, if I have uh, logins that are not um, uh, authenticated, then I, I will see that appearing here. So a lot of things um, dealing with uh, user root and authentication, whether something is being um, authenticated. So you see a lot of pseudo command are recorded. So you're not anonymous. When you're on a, a Linux system and you uh, doing any kind of administration, everything you're doing is going to be logged. Boot log. Um, permission denied. Ah, here's an example um, of Pi not being able to do that. So we're going to sudo cat boot log. All right. So this is basically the list of all the different actions that are taken by the Raspberry Pi when you turn it on for the first time. That's the booting, or if you reboot it. Uh, and OK means that uh, whatever it was doing um, terminated successfully, uh, which is what you, you want to do. So, so usually if you have a not OK, it's going to be red, and you'll be able to, to spot it pretty quickly. Um, so it's, you, you see there's a lot of things going on, a lot of um, different checks, and also systems started, and daemons, and so on. So that's the boot. Um, Kern, I'm going to skip that. If you're playing with the kernel and modifying the kernel, then the kernel is going to log some information there. D message. So here's an example of a log that is there, but you cannot really, the information that it contains is in binary, it's not text. So there's a command to read it, and it's, the command is called D message. So we can run D message and probably, all right. Um, and you're going to see also that there's a lot of overlap, that some information is logged in two different places. And so on the voltage detected, we're seeing this again here. Um, but here is, is, is not giving us the, the time, it's giving us something that um, I'm not sure, maybe it's the number of seconds or milliseconds since it was booted. I'm not sure, D message, so manual page, D message. All right, so um, I'm going to get some information about that um, that would explain uh, what's going on here. Um, man for man page, manual page is always cryptic. Sometimes there's um, info that is also installed, and info is, can be a little friendlier. So um, that's what you may want to look at. And if that doesn't work, there's always Google on the web. Um, all right. So that's the message. Um, let me run this again. Um, var log, fail log, so it records all the failed logins. So let's take a look at that. Um, uh, so K 
cat fail none. Oh, there's none. Um, interesting. Uh, there should be some, but uh, we'll figure it out. Um, and then daemon logs, so all these different services that are running or being stopped or started and so on. So uh, cat daemon. Okay, a lot of them. And here it's giving me information about different things that have been started. PHP session clean, so I'm seeing something relating to PHP. I remove PHP, so I may see some things about that. Um, Pips, daemon. Uh, Apache server, you see here I'm, I'm stopping the server because I'm going to be removing it. Uh, a lot of things here uh, happening. So all with, um, with daemon. Again, that's another file. And so I'm going to get the listing all again. So ls minus one. So all these different logs. Let me continue with uh, this. And also, so now you see that uh, I have Apache, Apache, MySQL. These um, services, Apache and the MySQL database server, will also record logs of their own. And they're going to be in the var log directory, but they'll be in the Apache or the MySQL subdirectory. And I don't think they're going to be there because I've removed them. So let's see. Um, yeah, I don't have subdirectories. Oh, let's see. There's an app, so they're blue. That's right. No, I don't have MySQL and Apache. But um, let's remember to do that when we install um, uh, Apache and, and, and MySQL. All right, uh, here's a little experiment that is quite interesting. Um, I'm going to look at the auth log, which is the, the, the log that uh, keeps track of the authentications, the successful and failed authentications. And tail minus f, tail by itself says, give me the end of a file. So by default, give me the last 10 lines. If I say tail minus f, what that command does, it looks at the end of the file, but it stops there. It waits, and if more information is added, then it's going to display. So it's kind of like a dynamic way of looking at the end of the file that you know is going to grow, and, and the tail minus F is going to keep on showing it. So um, I'm going to be um, doing that. So uh, tail minus F, auth log. All right, so now auth log is showing me, and you see I have to look at that. 2.47 p.m. So right now on my laptop is 2.54, and it's the cursor is staying, it's blocked there. Nothing has happened, so actually I can press enter to enter some blank lines, but my the tail minus F command is just waiting for auth log to grow, and if it grows by some lines, it's going to show them to me. So now I'm going to go to um, back to my um, Mac. So this is a, a tab where I'm talking to my Mac, and I'm going to try to log in into my Raspberry Pi using wrong credentials. So I'm going to do SSH minus Y bad guy at 278 is a geek.net. And of course, there's no username bad guy. And I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, enter. And of course, it's going to tell me that you know I'm not supposed to see permission denied. Please try again. Now let's go back to um, let's go back to the tail minus f of auth log. So you see the two blank lines I had added, and that these lines have just been added. And what I'm seeing is that invalid user bad guy from 192, 168, 1, 120. Oh, my, my um, IP address has changed uh, on this port. Uh, so there was at 2.55 PM uh, on host 270A through SSHD, there was an invalid um, uh, attempt. Check password, user on node, authentic authentication failure. So it's really giving me a lot. These, these four lines are really for one, um, one thing. Uh, oh no, from, so my IP, this is the IP address of my laptop, actually. 192, 168, 120. And so that's a local address because I'm, I'm, I'm working within the uh, confine of my Wi-Fi router. So it's only the things that are inside my home 
um, that are being reported here, my Raspberry Pi is not accessible from outside, from the web, from uh, any place on the internet except inside my home. Um, so that gives you an idea of how the, the logs work, and it's a nice little experiment to, to do. So let me actually log in, and so I'm going to put some more uh, space, and actually I'm going to try to see both tabs at the same time. So I'm going to detach this tab. I'm going to make this window shorter. All right. Um, okay, Control C. Connection closed, so you see this was recorded very, very quickly. So let me SSH again, but this time Pi. Okay, so I see that something has been um, has been done. Oh, by the way, something that I'm doing here is that I'm using a feature that allows me to SSH without entering a password. So I'm using keys. Um, if you are interested in doing that so that you don't have to enter your password every time, you look up uh, passwordless SSH Raspberry Pi and Google that. You'll get the information. It's quite simple to do. It takes a minute and then you can connect. It's still a secure connection. You don't have to use your password, but you have to have a secure key on your laptop and you put the, the public version of that on uh, Raspberry Pi and then you can connect. But anyway, so what we saw is that I still had a, uh, an entry in my log here. Um, anyway, something you can play with. Uh, you can try Pi with the wrong password and see what happens. Um, so that's that. Okay, and that's the end of this video. And I'm going to uh, take a little break. I don't, uh, uh, see, I already have my coffee here. This is, by the way, the um, mug from... Um, the hot chocolate run this year. Um, so I'm gonna have some coffee, then I'll come back and I will um, go through the lab and show you how to install Apache, PHP, MySQL, WordPress. So it's gonna take a while, um, but that's, um, that's the last lab. Uh, this, and this concludes our work together um, in CSC 270, if you're taking the CSC 270 class at Smith College.